Since the fall of the Mauryan Empire, a period of 500 years of domination of the provincial powers existed. Local leaders didn't manage to unify the region, but this was until the 4th century. The Gupta Empire was an ancient Indian empire, existing from the mid to late 3rd century CE to 543 CE. At its zenith in the 4th and 5th centuries, it covered much of the Indian subcontinent, especially in the north. A period of overall prosperity and growth followed, and continued for the next two and a half centuries, which came to be known as a Golden Age in India's history. The ruling dynasty of the empire was founded by the king Sri Gupta. The most notable rulers of the dynasty were Chandragupta I, Samudragupta, and Chandragupta II, alias Vikramaditya. Their origin is debatable. According to several theories, they originated in the present-day Uttar Pradesh, a region where a lot of historical proofs from that time had been discovered. But other sources are speaking about the Bengal region as the homeland of the early Guptas. Anyway, we have to move forward. While in Europe, large migrations happened, with more and more people entering deep in the Western and Roman Empire. More to the east, in India, a new powerful state was born. It comprised most of the north of India over the Ganges. For more than 200 years, this empire was led by emperors from the Gupta dynasty, and through history, it will be known as the Gupta Empire. Chandragupta I. In 320, he managed to conquer the neighboring states. Between 330 and 376, the emperor Samudragupta extends the empire from the Indus to the Gulf of Bengal and to the mountains in the north. In the southern kingdoms of Pallava, he defeated Vishnu Gopa and created tributary states. Many other northern kingdoms were incorporated into the Gupta Empire destroying nine kingdoms and subjugating their twelve. His campaigns led him in many directions, conquering more and more. Not every conquered region was annexed. He gained Pataliputra, a very important city which will become the capital of Gupta. Continuing on the east coast, Dakshinapatha and other border small states were conquered. This campaign has expanded and strengthened the power of the Gupta in north and east of India, gaining the important commercial wealth of this region, as well as the large manpower necessary in production and possible wars. Between 376 and 415, Chandragupta II strengthened its administration and encouraged commerce. Historical and literal evidence shows that Chandragupta II, called the son of Valor, has achieved military success against western satraps, who ruled in the west and central India. By doing so, the empire expanded to the coast of the Arabian Sea. In the first half of the 5th century, Jamaragupta, the son of Chandragupta II, ruled the empire from Bengal to Kathiawar, and from Himalaya to Narmada. In this period, military and financial resources were mobilized to defend the empire against the White Huns called Hephthalites. The empire was threatened by the rebellion of the Pushya Mitras and by the danger of the White Huns. From this time on, a slow decline started. Kamaragupta didn't have so many conquests or campaigns like his predecessors, but on the other hand, he consolidated the power and the structure of the empire, being considered a capable ruler. Feudal relations formed later and slower than in Europe. Slaves lived in very harsh conditions. They were forced to maintain the luxury at the courtyards or their masters, to serve the Brahmin priests and the army. Besides slaves, in India lived communities of free peasants. These communities of peasants lived better than the slaves, but were forced to pay gifts to the ruler and to participate in construction. Overall, the peasant communities of India were pretty similar to the European ones. In fact, the economic power of the Gupta was the exploitation of peasant communities. In the second part of the 5th century, Gupta rulers started to give to war veterans land and peasants to work for them. Some lands of the peasantry were split and reorganized under new masters. In cities lived craftsmen and weavers, very important jobs jobs at the time. New social hierarchy was influenced by the laws of Manu, from the most to the less important people. Brahmins, warriors, artisans, traders, peasants and the poor ones. 
Agriculture flourished due to the many rivers and irrigations too. Rice, wheat, barley, sesame, sugar, as well as spices were present in India. The exploitations of pearls, mines, and forests contributed to the development of society. The trade with West and East expands. Indian production reaching Rome and China. Precious stones, spices, ivory, cotton, sugar, and other goods are exported. In exchange, the Gupta Empire imported horses from Central Asia, fabrics from Tibet, and then slaves from the Roman Empire. Here, crimes were severely punished, depending on their severity, from financial fines to amputations or even death in some cases, according to the laws of Manu. Families were large, polygamy was present and embraced by the majority of the people. The Maharajas from Gupta dynasty were despotic rulers. The heir of the throne was initiated in the art of war, politics, philosophy, diplomacy, poetry, and music. Since his teenage years and before his rule, he was trained in a province. It's believed that in the Gupta Empire, there was a hierarchy of administrative divisions from top to bottom. The empire was called by various names such as Raja, Rashtra, Desha, Mandala, and other names. The structure was divided into 26 provinces. Provinces were also divided into Vishayas and put under the control of Vishayapatis. A Vishayapati administered the territory with the help of a council. The 4th and 5th centuries are a period in which the army organized in three army corps, infantry, cavalry, and elephant troops. The largest Indian empire that existed until that time was the Mauryan Empire. They had their military might and their strategies. Differently, the Guptas introduced several military innovations to Indian warfare. The use of heavy cavalry archers and heavy sword cavalry was promoted. The heavy cavalry formed the core of the Gupta Empire and were supported by the traditional Indian army elements. The accent was put more on horses than elephants. The history of chess starts here, beginning from some very old strategy games. The nobles are developing the game named Chaturanga. Also, some important attention was given to the development of knowledge in mathematics, astronomy, medicine, and poetry. Aryabhata, an astronomer of the Gupta period, proposed that the Earth is round and rotates around its own axis. It's also believed that he discovered that the moon and planets shine by reflected sunlight. Culture and knowledge expanded, being more and more present in this empire. Kalidasa, one of the biggest poets of India, created many literary works of art. Mahabharata is an exposure of behavior codes for kings, warriors, or people in search of freedom. Mahabharata shows the evolution of Hinduism and its relations with other religions or beliefs. Ramayana is one of the two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India, along with Mahabharata. It forms the Hindu Itihasa. The epic narrates the life of Rama, a prince from the north of India, managed to overcome geographical and military obstacles to free his wife. These two poems, Mahabharata and Ramayana, combine the historical myth with the truth to put in light the universal fight between good and evil. The Guptas were traditionally a Hindu dynasty. Even if Hindus had a large influence, the dynasty did not force their beliefs on the rest of the population, as Buddhism and Jainism were also encouraged. In that period, incredible detailed temples, palaces, and statues were built. The accent was also put in details in sculptures and pictures. A balance existed between Hinduism and Buddhism, and it wasn't clear which one will become the dominant religion or belief in the next centuries. Gupta kings fought against Saka. Scythian rulers from the northwest of India subcontinent were considered foreigners. Gupta Empire also fought the Huns, who came from Central Asia at the end of the 5th century. The Gupta state was attacked by the nomads more and more. The central administration collapsed in time and the empire became weaker and as a result of that, many local leaders declared their independence and separated from Gupta. In the 7th century, the empire collapsed. The north of India was divided between many other small kingdoms that fought each other. We are planning to cover more details about the rise and collapse of Indian kingdoms and empire. If you want to know more about this, subscribe to Nalegia and press the bell button. A big thank you to our generous supporters of Patreon. Every small support helps our channel a lot and makes possible the creation of better videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.